Grace and mercy and peace be with you today, friends of Christ, from God our Father and our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Parents were bringing their children to Jesus. And why wouldn't they? Why would you not bring your children to the very Son of God and ask Him to bless them? He, he's been going around healing people, blessing people all over. Why would you not bring your children to Him and have the Son of God bless your children? But those disciples, those foolish disciples again, those, those, the inner circle of Jesus, they think Jesus is too busy. Too busy to, to deal with children. Too important to spend time with kids. I, I mean, why, why would parents bring their kids to Jesus? What, what, does, what, what, what are they going to be able to understand about the great teacher, the great authority? They can't. They couldn't ever understand the complexities of who this man is and what he's capable of doing. I mean, they're just kids. So the disciples rebuke the parents and say, leave Jesus alone. Take your kids home. Jesus has more important things to do. Oh, then Jesus becomes indignant, <laughs> frustrated, angry at his disciples. And he says, let the little children come to me. Don't hinder them. For my kingdom belongs to such as these. And truly, I, truly I say to you, Whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter. And then he proceeded to take those children and he blessed them. Jesus takes the time to be with little children. Why? Why? What's so important about these little kids? What, what is it about them? Well, there's obviously something that's appealing about children to Jesus. Something about the way their minds and their hearts work. And Jesus says, my kingdom belongs to such as these. Now, just a quick little side note. Whenever you hear the kingdom of God in the scriptures, whenever Jesus talks about the kingdom of God, Many of our minds automatically go to some place, some location. We think, oh, he's talking about heaven. Like, you know, you're only going to get to heaven when you die if you do a certain thing. That, that's not really the right frame of mind, okay? Uh, the, the Greek word for kingdom of God, uh, it actually means it's not a location. It's not a place. Kingdom of God is, is a way that God works. It's, it's the, the reign. The, you know, Jesus is king. And so Jesus reigns, he rules in a certain way. This is what it means. The kingdom of God is like this. The way God works is like this. That I come to little children. I come to little children. I put together a little list this morning comparing children to adults. And Perhaps you're going to want to debate with me on whether this list is accurate or not, especially those of you with little children. Uh, but let's take a look at this list, and then I think maybe it'll help to uh, clarify some things today. So first of all, I believe that children listen and adults speak. Second of all, children will follow and adults like to lead. And you might be thinking, doesn't that guy have a four-year-old and a two-year-old? His kids always listen to him, follow him? And I would say, what, yours don't? <laughs> okay, complete sarcasm, complete sarcasm. Of course my kids don't do this perfectly. Uh, let's put the third one up on the screen, and I think if you see it as a complete unit, it might make sense. Children trust and adults doubt. When you, when you think about this list as a complete whole, those of you who are adults in the room, when I think about the way that I adult, I, I find myself doing these things more than those things. I, I find myself uh, speaking more than I do listening. When, when I'm dealing with people in relationships, I, I find myself 
uh, trying to have answers to things, trying to, you know, dominate the conversation, whatever it is. And, and especially then when, my, when that relationship turns to be with God, what do I do with God? Well, I, I'd rather tell God my wants, my wishes, my desires, tell him where and when I want him to be, and let him listen to me. Right? I almost demand that of him. I, I would rather lead other people than I would follow other people. Don't we raise people to be leaders, right? We, you know, we, we highlight that, it seems. Right? And then think about our relationship with God. What do I do with God? Yeah, I try to lead him all over the place. I say, God, I would like you here in my life, and I'd like you here in my life, but right here, man, let me just handle that one by myself. <laughs> and then when it comes to that final trust and doubt, yeah. I mean, think about what little children do. They just trust, right? Those of you who have kids, they, they trust you. They trust you. And, and yes, we proclaim to have trust in God, but as we get older, right, don't the doubts and the questions, the more life experiences that we have, the more, the more struggles that we have to actually take Jesus at his word? Think about the way that this works, right? I'm encouraging you, as, as Jesus is, to act like little children, to listen to his word, to follow him, and to trust him. And now as adults, you might be saying, and you might be saying, well, it doesn't seem smart to just blindly follow after somebody. I mean, we gotta, we gotta do what the Bible says, we have to test the spirits. We gotta make sure before we follow somebody that they're actually trustworthy, right? Before we give trust, we gotta, we gotta make sure they're trustworthy. We don't wanna lead our, we wanna teach our children to think and, you know, make good decisions. And, and while I would agree with you on all of that, we're, we're not talking about following people in this world. We're, we're talking about following the very creator of all that exists. And let me tell you, he's not dangerous. God is not dangerous to you. God, God created. You're talking about your creator. The, the one who made you out of his love. The, the one who sent his son into this world to bear your sin, be your savior, to rescue you from sin, death, and the power of the devil. Why would you not Give them all the trust that your human body can muster. And this is, this is the point today. The kingdom of God is for those who act like little children. The kingdom of God comes to those who act like little children. What do little children do? They listen and follow and, and trust. So first, when we come to Jesus Christ, we need to admit the fact that we don't have it all together. We need to come to Jesus Christ and say, Lord, Lord, I, I don't really know what it is that I need, but I know I need something. God, I, I'm lost. I've tried to put my trust in these worldly things, and everybody's let me down, and I don't know what it is, but, but I know there's something about you, and, and, and maybe I don't even know fully who you are, but, but I know that you've got it all figured out, and I trust you. See, that simple admittance of humility goes a long ways. It's not really until you admit that you're not God, that God can start being God in your life. It's not really until you start giving up control that you can realize how much control he actually has. Jesus says, let the little children come to me and don't hinder them, for my kingdom belongs to such as and now maybe it seems like Jesus is setting up this distinction between, between children and adults, as if saying, you adults are lousy, you're a, you're a bunch of sinners, but children, oh, they're, they're perfect, right? Children are, children are perfect. And, and maybe that's what you're, you're hearing me say, but let me just remind you, that's not the point. Little children are not perfect, right? And I can tell you that little children are not perfect. Perfect. And no, I'm not going to drag my children's mess into this sermon. But my children are not perfect. I will, however, drag in my own mess. You know how I know little children aren't perfect? Because I was one. Right? I was a little child. And, and on one particular day, just one day, when I was three years old, I went to the refrigerator when I was home alone with my mom. 
And I took a pound of grapes out of the refrigerator. I went to the carpet, threw them all over the carpet, and I proceeded to make wine by stashing them into the carpet. Right? And, and while my sweet and gracious mother was cleaning up that mess, I went to the refrigerator, got a you know, mostly full gallon of milk, and I dumped it all over the floor. And that was enough to force my mom to go and lock herself in her room, call my dad on the phone and say, Bob, if you ever want to see your youngest son, you better come home from work right now. My dad came home from work early that day. That's why I'm still here. Right? <laughs> little children are not perfect. I was not, you were not, my kids are not. Jesus is not saying little children are perfect and you adults are sin sinful messes. No, he's not saying that. What he's saying, though, is... These little children, there's something about the way their hearts work, the way their minds work, the way that they will give me their trust. Think about it. Think about it. Those of you who are parents, whether it's right now, whether you've got kids in your house, or those of you who are parents, uh, little, children, little children trust their parents, right? When they're worried, who do they go to first? Their parents. When they're scared, who do they go to? Their parents. When they need an answer, where do they go to? Their parents. Do you not know that your loving Father is the exact same way for every single one of you? Ready and willing at all times to hear your needs, to hear your concerns? And he says to you, just act like little children. Trust me. Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for my kingdom belongs to such as these. I want to show you a quick little video that I made the other day. We'll see if this helps me make sense. Do you know what this and this have in common? In the almost 150 years of this church's history, this and this have baptized around 2,700 and 50 people. Not all little children, but mostly. But in actuality, whenever we come to this place, we come as little children. Admitting our need, admitting our humility, admitting we need Jesus. 2,750 little children coming to Jesus. Um, all the records of people that have been baptized. And I don't read German, 
and neither does Judy, but Google does. Uh, so I had to Google uh, what uh, what baptism is, and we found it. So if we if we counted the right thing, and uh, and their records were were, uh, were kept correctly, uh, we're around 2,750 baptisms. And in the early days, some of those early pastors uh, traveled around a lot and baptized a lot of different uh, people. It was kind of a different world. Not everybody was baptized in one of these fonts, but still. 2,750 people. And I, I said in the video, you might not have caught it, but not everybody that came to the, that font was a little child, physically. But everybody that comes to that font, when you come to be baptized, you come as a little child. Right? You, you come admitting the fact that you need something that you can't provide on your own, and it only comes through the grace and mercy of Almighty God and our Savior Jesus Christ. You see, when we come to Jesus Christ, we come to Him, we come to Him in our need. We come to him when we fear, when we worry, when we're anxious. We cry out to him and we say, I need you, Lord. I don't know what to do. I don't have anything in myself. I'm lost without you. And Jesus says, let the children come to me. And again, if you're anything like me, and I, I'm no different than you. I'm serious. I'm no different than you. But if you're anything like me, perhaps you have a hard time giving God all that trust because you've been burned once many times. You know, in a, in a hot, hotly contested political season like this, we have people standing up, politicians in front of us constantly saying, oh, trust me, I'll make everything better. Yeah, right. You know, we've been burned way too many times, perhaps it's been by your own friends who say, oh, oh, trust me, trust me. And they let you down. Maybe it's even come from your own family. Trust me. They don't follow through. It is for this reason that we need to take Jesus at his promise because this is what makes him so different. This is what makes him different. When we can't trust anybody else, we can trust the one who always follows through on his promises. And guess what? His promises are so good for you. Because his promise for you today is that you are forgiven, that you are his child, that he will always be with you, and that all of this sin and all of this fear and anxiety that you face will one day come to an end. He promises you that, and I promise you, and I have full confidence that he will follow through. Because if he won't, I don't know what we're doing here. And this is what we're going to do for these next few weeks in Lent. Jesus says, trust me, follow me. And so for these final few weeks of Lent, we will follow Jesus, and we're going to keep tracking in Mark's gospel. We'll get close to Jesus. We'll follow him. We'll watch him have authority. And it's all going to come to a head on March 25th. And Jesus will hang his head and die for us. But believe me, that's not the end. we got to be here on March 27th, either here or a Christian church somewhere. Stay tuned and see what Jesus does next in his name. Amen.